Where was the GOP's 100-day plan to take out Obama? Anybody remember that plan? Where's the GOP's 100-day plan to take out Hillary Clinton? Anybody heard of that plan? Now, that, that plan doesn't exist either, but they've got a 100-day plan to take out Trump. Now, folks, and I don't, I'm, I'm not particularly eager to be repetitive here because there's so much new every day, but I, I want to go back. I've, I've spent a couple of days here trying to make a case with analogies and everything at my disposal to try to illustrate and inform just precisely how the Republican establishment is not going to sit by and let somebody take away from them what they have. And it's, it's not just their power. I mean, that's a large element of it. But it's their entire reason for existing. Positions of standing in one of the only two major political parties in the country. There's so much tied into it. You look at five of the seven wealthiest counties surround Washington, D.C. The networking there, the contacts, the, the power structure, the ladder of success that you climb there, it's well laid out. It's perfectly structured. It is a very exclusionary club, and it is not merit-based. Entry into the club is, is not something you can just apply for and become a member. It requires breeding. It requires certain pedigrees and resumes, education, and so forth. It has provided a lot of power, a tremendous amount of wealth, huge self-esteem. These are people that walk around feeling really big about themselves. There's a lot of swagger. People walk around, they feel very happy with themselves, very powerful, very smug, very confident, because the future is laid out, the, uh, the structure is what it is, and members are taken care of. Everybody's got everybody's back. And the idea that something like this could be busted up with an election, sorry, not going to tolerate it, not going to even give that a chance. They are going to resist whatever effort is made to wrest power from them, to, to, to assume their positions or what have you, which is how they see Trump. So despite all the talk that you hear, and I think it's smokescreen talk from this establishment member or that particular Republican or that consultant or that lobbyist or whatever, despite talk of unity and coming together, believe me, behind the scenes, there is none of that. Behind the scenes, all there is is scheming that is designed to protect what they've got. That's more important than the party winning elections. Do not doubt me. So when I saw this New York Times story headlined Republican leaders map a strategy to derail Donald Trump, I believe every word of it. I think there's probably even more to it than what the story uh, includes. But here are some highlights. Recognizing that Mr. Trump has seized a formidable advantage in the race. They say that an effort to block him would rely on an array of desperation measures, the political equivalent of guerrilla warfare. There is no longer room for error or delay, the anti-Trump forces say, and without a flawlessly executed plan of attack, he could become unstoppable, and that is unacceptable. But should that effort falter, should they fail to stop Trump, and his army of supporters. Should that falter, leading conservatives are prepared to field an independent candidate in the general election to defend Republican principles and offer traditional conservatives an alternative to Trump and his populism. They described their plans in interviews after Trump's victories last Tuesday in Florida and three other states. Now, if your reaction, well, wait a minute, that guarantees Hillary. Exactly. And they know it, and they're fine with it. Hillary Clinton winning maintains the existing order. The existing order is not based on winning elections. If it were, half the people in this club would have been thrown out by now. 
I mean, half the people in this club are the reason Republicans don't win elections, and they're still there, and they're still members in good standing of this power structure, whatever name you want to give it. And by by throwing a third-party candidate out there where principled conservatives can once again vote to guarantee the continuation of socialist Marxism in the United States, that's considered a wise move. Because it preserves what's important to the establishment. The names of a few well-known conservatives have been offered up in recent days as potential third-party standard bearers. And William Crystal, editor of the Weekly Standard, has circulated another of his famous memos to a small number of conservative allies detailing the process by which an independent candidate could get on general election ballots across the country. Among the recruits under discussion are Tom Coburn, a former Oklahoma senator who has told associates he'd be open to running, and Rick Perry, the former Texas governor who was suggested as a possible third-party candidate at a meeting of conservative activists on Thursday. So you got that conservative group that met on Thursday that could not come to a consensus, apparently. This is an entirely different group. We got two different. We got the establishment and the conservative groups. Now, Crystal was not a member of the conservative group. He's part of the establishment. He runs the Weekly Standard. And I'm sure he thinks, who's going to read this? Who's going to want to read this if uh, we're not in power or if we're not in charge of the opposition, if we're not perceived to be in charge of the opposition? Now, Coburn said he, he, he left the Senate early last year to get cancer treatment. But he said that Trump needs to be stopped and he expected to back an independent candidate against Trump. He said uh, he had little appetite for a campaign of his own, but he didn't rule it out. I'm going to support that person, whoever this group comes up with, to stop Trump. I don't expect that person to be me. Trump opponents convened a series of war councils last week to pinpoint his biggest vulnerabilities and consider whether to endorse Cruz or Casey. See, this is... You know what, what gives this up you know what what exposes this is as as not being about the party why are these people not unifying around ted cruz you got a guy who is second in delegates you have a guy is in the senate i know I've, uh, look it's a rhetorical question i know the answer to the question it makes the point you've got trump they don't want any of these three they really don't want Trump, and they really don't want Cruz. They're in a panic. They've got to come up with somebody. Why? If they were serious about winning, why and unity, why not? If you don't like Trump, and you're going to take Trump out, why not unify behind Cruz? And the fact that they don't want to do that should be all you need to know about what really is going on here. And it isn't about winning the presidency, folks, and that's... You want to, you, you, I mean, it's another in a long line of reasons of why Trump exists and why Trump has supporters. You go back to these protests, which are not protests, these criminal actions. I will guarantee you that Trump supporters, they are made up of a lot of people, folks. They are, you know, there's another thing happening, by the way. The Trump supporter is being presented as a poor, dumb, uneducated, white working class person who has lost his manufacturing job 10 years ago and wants to blame somebody for his for his failures that's who they want you to believe trump supporters are it may be the most disadvantaged group in this country to be a member of today the white working class seems like everybody's dumping on that group of people the white working class in their view in their minds, they're the ones who have gone off to fought the wars. They're the ones who have voted the existing Republican power structure into office year after year after year. They are the ones that pay their taxes. They are the ones who do the work that very few other people in the country want to do, including joining the military. And everybody's dumping on them. Prior to joining Trump, you know what they did? They were Tea Partiers. And by the way, the Tea Party and Trump supporters are not monolithic. They're not all poor, white. Look, it. let me just call a spade a spade. What they want you to believe is the average Trump voter is an uneducated hick. White trash. 
upset over his own or her own personal failures looking to blame somebody else. And Trump has come along and given them comfort. That's not who they are. Sure, some people in that group might fit that description. The vast majority of them are Tea Partiers. The vast majority of them are really middle class, some of you upper middle class, who are fit to be tied. You look at these protests that are the, the, the criminal actions that are called protests. I don't know how to emphasize this. Since the 1960s, there has been a building anger and resentment at all of these protesters and everything they've gotten away with and everything they have destroyed. People have sat in their homes and watched this stuff and they have cursed it. They have opposed it. They have wondered why nobody does anything to stop it. They have wondered why malcontents like this get away with destructive criminal behavior. They know it's not protest. They know it's not. Je- these are rent mobs These are bought and paid for. These are anarchists. These are just, just they're a miserable bunch. A miserable lot of collected leftists who are never happy and never going to be happy. They're bought and paid for. And for years, nobody has done a thing about them. They have been permitted to become what is seen as an active political force for the Democrat Party. The Republican Party doesn't stand up to them, tries to coddle them. The Republican Party doesn't do what Trump comes along and simply isn't taking it. And it's another reason why people are supportive of Trump. I mean, there's a lot tied up in all of this terms of reasons to explain Trump support and so forth. But the, the, the great misunderstanding exists inside the Beltway. Great misunderstanding of just who and what the majority American body politic is. Who they are, what they think, what their dreams are. That's foreign territory to people inside the Beltway. And they are resented to boot. Republican Party had a chance to embrace it. I never could understand why they wouldn't embrace the anti-Obama coalition, Obamacare. There was a built-in majority waiting for the Republican Party to join and become a majority. And then the Tea Party came along and they wanted no part of the Tea Party. And the Tea Party presented an opportunity to once again become a majority party. And they wouldn't unite with the Tea Party. What do they expect going to happen when they reject their own voters, when they reject people that want to support them over and over again, when they mock them and laugh at them and make fun of them? What do they think is going to happen when somebody like Trump comes along?